So when it comes down to it, what's really important in Gears of War and any console shooter is that you hit your shots. So what's really important to know about Gears of War Ultimate Edition, unlike Gears 2, 3, and Judgment, the shots actually come out of the very center of your screen as opposed to the barrel of your shotgun. So the reason it's really important to differentiate that is because it could be easy in a third-person shooter to focus on where the gun is or the visual indicator on your screen. Don't worry about that. Focus solely on the center of your screen or where the reticle is on your screen when you're aiming. So what a lot of people don't realize when they're new to Gears is actually where the center of their screen is. Um, something that helps me a lot is I aim just uh, above my character and to the right, and I hit the bang on every time. Oh yeah! So in every Gears of War match, every player on the field starts with the same exact weapons or the same tools to success. Those are the four starting weapons in Gears of War, and it's really important that you focus on really perfecting these weapons because power weapons are important, but these weapons are ultimately we're gonna help you rack up some kills. So the Lancer is more of your medium to long range weapon in Gears of War Versus. You wanna use it to support your teammates, to put some long range fire on enemies, and really to rack up the long distance kills in Gears of War. Many players uh, face the challenge of not uh, knowing when to use the Lancer in certain situations. Some people try to only go for chainsaws at close range, some people try to snipe with it from long range. It's about finding that balance where you're always being effective from mid range, uh, where you get the, the most use of the Lancer. So if you see one of your teammates in a one-on-one -on -one shotgun fight, one thing you can do to help support that teammate is support fire from a, from a distance, get him weak, which is going to allow your teammate to one-shot down him and maybe finish the kill. Another good example of when to use the Lancer is if you know you're playing against an opponent that is very aggressive with the Nasher, you can actually play a very passive Lancer style of play behind cover where you can spray them down as they're pushing you and really take advantage of their aggression. Next up we have my favorite weapon and the most used weapon in Gears of War multiplayer history, the Nasher. Oh yeah! The golden rule of the Nasher is using the right shot at the right time, which is actually pretty difficult for new players to get used to. So the first way of firing is the blind fire. The blind fire is most effective at very close ranges. So as part of the golden rule, you only want to blind fire when you're close to medium distance with the Nasher. Blind firing is all about uh, feeling your shotgun and the way the shot's gonna come out. That does take practice, uh, but a couple things that you can do is again, you can look over your right shoulder and you can try to line it up right in the center. Um, and again, uh, if you have any other tips for just trying to aim at the center of your screen, not so much where you think it's gonna go when you're first starting to play gears, but more just right at the center of the screen, that'll really help your blind fire game. Next up we have the quick scope, which is most effective at medium range with the Nasher. The quick scope is done by quickly pressing left trigger to scope in, and then right trigger to shoot right after, and then releasing both triggers. After using the left trigger, um, you can use that window of opportunity while your gun's cocking um, to actually move around cover and try to avoid their shots. Oh, yeah. uh, one common mistake that I see all the time when people are using the Nasher is they try to use the B button too much to get the melee. Uh, in Gears of War Ultimate Edition, just like the original, if you get uh, hit, take any damage while you're meleeing, your character will get thrown back and you'll actually get stunned, resulting in death most of the time. So I would definitely stick to uh, shooting the gun more than meleeing with the gun. So your snub pistol, or down on your D-pad, is a really interesting weapon. It's a secondary weapon, but it does a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. So if I'm playing a game type like King of the Hill, or a team deathmatch where I can pick enemies off from a distance, if I download with my Lancer, again, I'm caught in a reload, um, I can whip out the pistol and quickly secure the kill um, before continuing on. Another important thing to note, the snub pistol can actually result in a headshot, where the enemy's opponent's head is actually going to explode, resulting in an instant kill as opposed to a down but not out. So by pressing up on your D-pad, you actually have a smoke grenade. Every player in Gears of War spawns with a smoke grenade, which is the tactical aspect of Gears of War. You can use this smoke grenade to help position yourself, your teammates, or to make any coordinated pushes with your team. So if you're going to use the smoke grenade, uh, which is going to be used in many strategies, you start with one in your loadout. Um, you can use it to cover your own push. If you want to make sure they can't see you and maybe not get sniped by the sniper rifle, um, you could use it that way and push uh, effectively without dying. Um, you can also use it to cover your teammates as well. Um, you can throw one on them while they're pushing, they're busy doing stuff, you can, you can have their back that way. So don't forget that in Gears of War Ultimate Edition, the smoke grenade does not actually stun the opponent like it does in Gears of War 2, 3, and Judgment. So a common mistake made in the game is that players will throw smoke grenades at hills, at uh, power position spots, and that'll actually just deter your own vision as opposed to effectively using the smoke grenade to position yourself. Smoke out!